Hi everyone, Joe Spirot here coming at you from Middletown, Delaware. Uh, currently, I'm the quality manager of First Aid Brewing Company. Uh, previously, I had roles as a sensory specialist at Dogfish Head, where I worked for four and a half years, running quality uh, taste panels, training coworkers, um, involved with hospitality, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, before that, I was a quality chemist at Yards Brewing Company in Philadelphia. I, my background, I have my bachelor's in biology and chemistry from Arcadia University and my master's in food science from Drexel University, uh, both in the Philadelphia area. Uh, in the past, uh, a lot of my research has focused on how brewing processes affect sensory perception. So things like how do true drops affect the level of perceived mercaptan or how do yeast pitching rates affect the formation of specific esters in beer. Uh, the research I'm going to share with you today was actually part of my master's thesis, um, and I did this while I was working at Yards, so it was in conjunction with Yards and Drexel. Uh, this presentation was shared at the 2016 World Brewing Congress, so I'm excited to share it with the members of the Craft Beer Professionals Group in this virtual conference. I'm also super excited because Last time I spoke to you in December, it was the night before first date opened um, to the public. And today, very exciting, is our first can run. So it seems pretty cool that uh, every time I'm able to talk to you, there's some exciting news on the first date front too. So let's get into it. So we all know that color has a huge impact on flavor perception. Research has shown that increased color is often paired with increased perception of intensity. We tend to think of certain colors leading to certain flavors. We expect them to taste a certain way. If you tasted something red, you may think it was cherry or apple or strawberry, where if you tasted something yellow, you're automatically gonna go and assume it's a lemon type flavor. This certainly also applies to packaging. Um, so there's tons of research done on external food packaging, the vessels that drinks are served in, coffee mugs. Um, and so that's a huge part as well as the product itself. So everyone's familiar with Starburst candy and M&Ms. When you think about Starburst, you see pink one, you think strawberry, red, cherry, yellow, lemon, orange, orange flavor. Now, opposite of that, M&Ms. Although you may have a favorite color of M&M, and I do admit my favorite is blue, I will pick the blue one out and eat that over any of the rest, they don't taste any different whatsoever. It's simply the color that is different. But somewhere in our brains, we are matching color with what we're perceiving and our liking of things. So the real question comes down to, how does this apply to beer and the various shades of beer from the palest straw to the darkest black? So when we initially were deciding to do research, we knew that we specifically wanted to look at color perception, but also bitterness specifically. And the reason we chose bitterness is because there was a common misconception at that time, and this was in 2016, um, that black beers would be more bitter. And this was based on historical and socioeconomic trends. Since then, things have changed a little bit, especially with IPA, hazy IPA boom, and customers' tastes are definitely changing, but that's what we decided to look at then. So overall, this was a two-part experiment. Uh, part one was determining if there was any difference in darkening methods. So we used black malt during the brewing process in one trial and Cinnamar in the other. Cinnamar is a Bayerman product derived from black malt. Um, the big selling point is that it can add dark color, um, some hues without any flavor or roasty bitter um, attributes if used in appropriate amounts. So we tested those two first. And then once we determined which darkening method that we wanted to move forward with, we would go on to see how that affected perception of bitterness and other attributes in beer. So these are the three main hypotheses that were tested. We expected that one, there would be no chemical or perceived sensory difference between darkening beer with Cinnamar versus using a dark malt during brewing. Two, that a beer brewed with a darkening agent, whichever one it was chose, would not be discriminable from an undarkened beer when the color is obscured. And three, 
consumers in the Philadelphia area, represented by Drexel University students, staff, and faculty, would perceive this darker beer as more bitter, despite color being the only variable that was changed. So here's a quick overview of the experiment overall. So as I discussed, experiment one was simply testing darkening technique. So at the top you can see we brewed a batch of base pale beer, split it into two over fermentation. One we added Cinnamar to yield one pale beer and one dark beer. We then brewed another batch to the same exact specifications, except this time used black malt during the brewing process to yield a beer with the same color as that darkened with Cinnamar. Little spoiler alert, we ended up using Cinnamar. We'll get into that later. But in experiment two, we brewed a triple batch of the same base pale beer, split it into three over fermentation, and then left one untreated, treated one with enough Cinnamar to get it to an amber light brown color, and the other to get it to a dark brown or black color. So let's first talk about experiment one, which was the darkening technique experiment. Again, this was just to determine if there was a difference between the use of dark malt um, or Cinnamar during the brewing process. So this was a standard American pale ale, nothing too special, um, malt bill not overly complex, very lightly hopped with citra. Um, moving forward, we can think of the base beer as L for light, the dark Cinnamar beer for DS, and the dark grain one brewed with black malt as DG. So after brewing, uh, there was a series of biological and chemical analysis analyses completed. Um, first part was uh, microbiological testing. So we used various bacteria and wild yeast medium that was incubated at 25 degrees Celsius in a 6% CO2 environment for 120 hours, basically just to make sure there was no infection and that the only thing that we were seeing, we were expecting. And we also tested color, SRM, standard reference method, and bitterness international bittering units using the ASBC methods, um, spectrophotometric methods. So after we analyzed all of the uh, physical and chemical attributes of the beer, we wanted to see how people would perceive it or be able to tell the difference. Because this was partially run through a university, um, it needed to get IRB, Institutional Review Board approval, Basically, it's just a board that reviews and monitors research, um, makes sure that participants are protected, that we're not doing anything weird. Um, so this was actually exempt, but we still went through the process and got approved. To test if there was a difference uh, between the samples, uh, we did a discrimination test at Yards Brewing Company, that's in Philly. Uh, it was done with company employees all over the age of 21, without saying. Um, 24 of them, and they were asked to do a blind triangle test with the base yellow beer versus the dark grain, and then the base yellow beer versus the darkened beer with Cinnamar. All of this data was analyzed following the normal approximation to the binomial distribution at a P of less than 0.05. Null hypothesis chance of a correct answer is one third in this case. So into the results. So in the biological and chemical analysis, all of the beers came out to 5.5% um, within the standard error. So all the same alcohol level. In terms of microbiology, we did not see any indication of wild yeast or bacterial contamination. The only positive results that we got uh, were on Lynn's wild yeast medium, and it was actually the culture yeast um, that was inoculated into the beer. In terms of chemical analysis, you can see that uh, bitterness was not significantly different between any of the samples, uh, but color was significantly different between light and dark samples, but not significant between the dark grain and the dark cinnamar. So we were comfortable saying these beers are the same color, same bitterness level, same alcohol, same microbiological profile. So results of the sensory, it was the 24 participants from yards, two different triangle tests, the one tailed upper critical limit for correct decisions using the binomial distribution at one third is 13. And as you can see for the light versus the dark grain and the light versus the dark cinema, neither of them hit that level. So it is showing that there is a 
non-significant difference between the samples. So we could use either method to darken the beer and when obscured, when people did not know that they, the beers were a different color, they were not able to tell that they were different beers. So a triangle test was used in this case versus a different type of sensory discrimination test like a three AFC, alternative force choice, is we don't know the exact difference between samples. So by using a triangle test, it leaves it a little more open-ended. So the initial darkening test was completed uh, to compare the two potential methods to be used later in this study. Both the use of Cinemar and the addition of black malt during the brewing process were found to effectively darken beer and remaining flavor neutral. And that's at normal use levels. So if you were to increase the amount of Cinemar, you likely would see effects, but not at the intended use level. There was no statistical significance at a P of less than 0 0.05 between darkening methods. And moving forward, Cinemar was selected for use throughout the color perception testing simply for its ease of use. Um, it can be added at various steps during the brewing process, and you can always adjust the color further. So if we went with the dark grain um, and we wanted it to be a little darker, you're kind of done after brewing's over, whereas with Cinemar, we could always add a little bit more just to change the color to what we wanted it to be. So experiment two, this is the big one dealing with color perception. Overview again, um, beer production was the same as experiment one, um, same base pale ale. This time we, however, split it into three different levels, a light yellow L, medium brown M, and a dark black D. And again, these were all darkened with Cinemar. We did the same level of microbiological testing using various wild yeast medium, uh, bacteria medium, and this was held at 25 degrees Celsius um, in a 6% CO2 environment for 120 hours. Color was tested again uh, alongside bitterness using the ASBC methods. This time, however, we also decided that we were interested in looking at carbonation level, fill level, and pH level. And the reason that we did this is that we wanted to ensure without a doubt that these beers were exactly the same from a carbonation, fill, pH, color, bitterness, microbiological profile, alcohol level, and that the only thing that was changing, sorry, was color um, so that we would know moving forward these beers are all the same. So first thing we did was a discrimination test. This again needed IRB approval since it was using human participants. This was again completed at Yards Brewing Company with company employees, this time 21. You see in front of you a setup of the actual sensory study that participants saw. So they did three blind triangle tests using L, M, and D, and they repeated that twice. So they had a test that was L versus M, M versus D, and L versus D. And this was repeated twice. Data was again analyzed following the normal approximation to the binomial distribution, P less than 0 0.05. And again, the null hypothesis for a correct answer would be one third. So now for the big perceptional study. So this was a consumer test, and this was done at Drexel University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This was done in the academic bistro of the Drexel Hospitality Program and Food Science Program. Um, before the study, uh, we sent out a online kind of questionnaire to get people interested and see what the interest was in general. Um, we were able to net 85 total participants this included Drexel faculty, staff, and students, of course, again, all over the age of 21. So with this one, we went in and asked um, participants on all three beer samples, so the light, M, and dark, um, to rate the beer samples for specific attributes. So these included bitterness, sweet, sour, and salty. For this, we chose a 15-point scale ranging from 1 to 15, 
one meant no taste present, 15 meaning extreme presence. We then asked the panelists to rate each bear on a liking scale, a nine point hedonic scale ranging from dislike extremely to like extremely. We also collected some demographic information at the end of the ballot. This included things like age, educational level, likelihood to purchase beer, likelihood to consume beer, your general beer tastes, and if there were any favorite brands or styles of beer that the participant had. Um, after the experiment was run, uh, a one-way analysis of the variance, ANOVA with repeated measures was used with significance at P less than 0.05, and this was all analyzed uh, using our statistical language program. So looking at the results, you can see on your screen, ranging from left to right, L is your light beer sample, M is your medium brown sample, and D is the dark black sample. In terms of biological and chemical analysis, we again found all samples to be within 5.5%. During microbiological testing, we again saw no infection taking place. So this, the only microbes present in the samples were the culture yeast. In terms of carbonation, fill height, pH and bitterness, there was no significant difference between samples. There was, however, a significant difference in color, and that was intended. So again, this is an SRM, so our light sample was at 13 SRM, medium around 30, and dark measured around 55. So knowing that all of these samples, pretty much from a biological, chemical, physical standpoint were exactly the same except for color, we then moved on to our sensory evaluation. So with the discrimination test that was completed at Yards, the 21 subjects participated in six total triangle tests, three repeated twice. Um, independence of repeated tested, uh, independence of repeated tests between subjects was tested. Um, when they were found to be statistically independent, results were pooled and no results were found to be significant. So between light versus dark, light versus medium and medium versus dark, there was no detectable difference between samples. And again, these samples were obscured in cups with lids. So people were only smelling and tasting the beer. They were not able to see it. So at those two concentrations of Cinemar, there was no apparent impact on the flavor profile of the beer. Now looking at the um, results for the study that was completed at Drexel, the consumer test, overall, there was no significant impact of color on sweet, salty, sour, or liking ratings. However, color did have a significant effect on the perception of bitterness. Interestingly enough, this was the opposite of our original hypothesis. So the light yellow beer was actually perceived as more bitter, medium less in the middle, and dark as the less bitter. And this was at P of 0 0.007. So this was a significant effect. So we thought that was pretty interesting. So we decided to use the demographic information that we collected and further analyze the results by breaking people into expertise groups. So this was mainly based on the rating of beer liking and beer consumption. And we decided to group them in expert levels and novice levels. So we found we had 51 experts and 34 novices. Novices being those who didn't rate their beer liking high or consumption high. Within both, um, we found that bitterness perception was affected by both expertise and beer color. So there was actually an effect between the two. So between subjects variable being expertise was significant at P of 0 0.019. And the within subjects variable of color was significant at 0 0.007. So again, the opposite of what we expected, but fairly interesting. In general, it was noted that novice uh, participants 
perceive beer as more bitter, um, which makes sense. Uh, bitterness is one of those uh, tastes that people become acquired to. Now here is a chart looking at the um, effect of beer color and expertise level on perception of bitterness. So this is it broken into two results. So you can see that really the novices are rating the beer as much more bitter in general, but they did drive that result of lighter beer being perceived as more bitter. Um, Interestingly enough, when we broke it into expertise levels, we also saw that novices rated saltiness as higher in general, and that experts across the board rated all three beers liking higher than novices, which again, makes sense. So overall, we found that beer can be darkened in color with both black malt or cinnamar with no detectable change in flavor. When color was visible, uh, the lighter yellow beer was perceived as significantly more bitter than the darker black beer. Novice beer drinkers seemed to truly drive the sensory results, um, and experience overall did play a significant role on the beer perception. Now, thinking about it from a socioeconomic historical standpoint, uh, trends are changing. Um, when this study was completed in 2015, uh, Pennsylvania was the number one uh, state for barrels of beer produced, the number two for economic impact, and the number seven for overall number of craft breweries. So as it stands, most people in Pennsylvania are more than likely at least trying craft beers if they're beer drinkers. Also, IPAs and pale ales are becoming more and more popular. Everyone knows IPAs year over year are the top rated and top sold beers. Um, so the people are more and more aware that these beers that tend to be paler in color tend to be a little more bitterness. So we may be skewing the other way where if someone gets a paler beer, they may assume if it's from a craft brewery that it's more toward an IPA or a double IPA and more bitter. Uh, anecdotally, one thing I didn't talk about, um, panelists, were able to leave comments and just talk to us after they were done with their study. And it was very interesting how their perception of what they thought the beer was really drove their rating. So especially in Philly, um, those who saw the brown and medium brown beer assumed that it was a lager. So they didn't think it was really that bitter at all. So these assumptions definitely did play a role in how people completed the study. Uh, moving forward, I think that it'd be interesting to go back, data and mine some of this um, research, um, see if there were any other interactions, but also see how the perception of color impacts other desirable flavors like maltiness or fruitiness. This has similarly been done in wine, where there was a study with red wine versus white wine, and a white wine was dyed red, and panelists described that white wine as having more berry and red wine-like characteristics, so I'm sure that would be interesting to observe um, how off flavors um, are perceived, uh, such as acetaldehyde, diacetyl, transphenol, that papery type off flavor. And then to further dig into demographic information and split the study and see if there is a difference between people who largely drink quote unquote macro beers versus someone who drinks more of craft beers. So that's it for me. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this information I was able to share with you. Uh, I will open the uh, comments up for questions and see if you guys have anything. So I'm not seeing any questions on my end, um, but always feel free to leave them on the comments of the YouTube or in the uh, Craft Beer Professional group. 
but really happy to share some time with you guys and uh, hopefully see you again. Thanks.